Okay, here we go. Time for a neckline. Now, because of the way that this pattern printed up, I kind of had to put a little more thought into the neckline than you normally would. So when you cut all the pieces out, you end up with this very small strip that was right at the end, and this is your neckline. Um, now you could, of course, paste this onto another sheet of paper that would fit in your knit leader and just, just go with it that way, and that's fine. I'm not going to do it that way because I really don't feel like I need to um, because I'm going to use a method that is a little untraditional here. Um, so the first thing that I want, because it is supposed to be a t-shirt style, is I want my neckline to be kind of a fine knit and, and finer than what the main body of my piece is. Um, so I'm going to return to a single strand of yarn at attention one. And because I've already done a swatch for this yarn at attention one, I know that that's 42 stitches for four inches or 10 centimeters. So I'm going to grab my scale for 42 stitches and I'm just going to put the zero on the scale up against the left hand line on my pattern and see how many stitches I need wide. And my scale is telling me 16 stitches on either side of zero. And now I don't need this anymore. I will keep it for re this pattern, but really that's the only information that I need because the rows at this point are a little inconsequential for me because of what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do, and, and you can see I have my pretty little neckline still on waist yarn and ravel cord, and I've got these beautiful live stitches right there underneath the ravel cord. So what I want to do is actually employ a method that hand knitters use when they're binding off a shawl. Because your bind off and your cast on tends to be the breaking point when it comes to elasticity and stretch. On the edge of a shawl, you really don't want to have a traditional bind off there. So usually what we'll do is what's known as a knitted on border, um, where you cast on a couple of extra stitches for your border and those stitches run perpendicular to your shawl. So if the stitches for your shawl are running this way, the stitches for your border are running this way. And as you knit towards the body of the shawl, you knit the one stitch from the shawl together with one stitch of the border. And it's a really neat effect because you never really bind anything off until you get to the very end and you're only binding off just a handful of stitches on the edge of your border. So I'm gonna do this that technique on my sweater collar um, and the reason why is a lot of people will knit ribbing or even just stock a net collar, but when they go to put it on, they can't put it on because the bind off is so tight that it doesn't allow the rib to stretch. So we're going to eliminate that possibility from the very beginning. So I'm going to knit it widthwise directly onto my piece. Now, one thing that I have to consider is this neckband is folded. So because of that, because I've got short rows here, I'm going to have just a smidge of gapping, especially on the edges where I knit straight from, from short rows. Um, so I want to kind of keep that in mind. And I want my neckband to fold forward and for me to sew it down on the front of the piece. So in order for that to happen, I need to hang these stitches from the right side. Um, and on the public side of the piece um, and on the left hand side of the bed or I could do it on the right but for me I've always just been a little more comfortable on the left and what that's going to do is this is going to be like this and I'm going to have this purled section here so my other edge will fold forward over the edge here but all of my stitches are going to be nice and secure Unlike sometimes with a cut and sew neckline where you have live stitches that you're trying to grab with your sewing needle or your crochet hook, everything's going to be nice and secure for me. So the other thing that I don't want is a seam somewhere in my collar. Because I have a round neck, I don't want to have to try and figure out where to put that seam. You know, do you put it on one side of the shoulder? But my shoulder doesn't have a seam either because I joined it on the machine. So with that in mind, I automatically know that I'm going to graft 
my first and my last row together. So I'm going to Kitchener stitch those together. Um, so I want to go ahead and cast on in the same style that I have been casting on this entire time with that open cast on, um, automatic cast on Ravel cord cast on. Um, so let me grab my waist yarn here and I've already got my carriage set to attention eight, which is okay for this. I'm obviously going to go down drastically when I get to um, my main yarn because that's going to be on attention one. And I've already got my needles forward here. So they're all ready to go. All I have to do is thread my carriage and knit that first row. Apply a weight and then grab my ravel cord, which as always is conveniently located on the floor next to me. Behind the gate pegs, around, down, give them a cross, give them a tug. You want to at least make sure that your leading edge is very, very tight. Okay. Remove my weight, pull out the rattle cord. And see, when you don't make mistakes doing that cast on, it comes out nice and easy. There is that. And I'm just going to do a handful more rows. Pop that yarn right out of there and get it completely out of my way. And then grab that ball of ravel cord again and go ahead and do one row. And there we go. There's that. And you'll notice I break this every time. I don't bother trying to salvage this cord and reuse it over and over and over again. Mostly because I have a whole lot of this stuff in my stash from doing crocheted shawls and bedspreads and things like that. Um, so I have a fairly large stash of it. But here in the States, one of those balls is like $4. Um, and there's two, 3,000 yards on it. Um, so really what you're saving is like a fraction of a penny if you're trying to salvage it and reuse it every time. And I just, I really don't think that it's worth it. <laughs> Some of you may be a little more uh, penny pincher than I am and, and not agree with that statement. And I totally understand. But in the grand scheme of things, a couple of pennies is not going to help me. Okay, so tension goes down to a one. And I'm going to bring my weaving brushes back in because I don't need them anymore. I'm going to knit the first row and then hang my first stitch. Okay, so grab my piece. Now where you start is completely up to you. There's no golden rule here, okay? But I think that I want to start on my back. Um, that way, if there is a little line for the Kitchener stitch for my grafting, that it isn't anything too overly drastic. And if you remember, when we joined our, our two sides from the short rows, we put a knot to, um, to put the two sides together so that there wasn't a, a noticeable gap and so that all of our ends were kind of tied up and they weren't going to be floppy and cause problems. So that's actually what I'm going to start with is I'm going to pick that knot up and hang that on the machine um, because that knot does represent a stitch. Uh, it's, it, it does have a purpose. So this allows me to kind of leave it in there and then I'll weave in those ends later. But for right now, that's a really good place for me to start. So I'm going to knit one row, two rows, and then hang the next stitch. Now, because I've drastically reduced my tension, I shouldn't have to actually reduce my neckline. Because my tension is going to be so much tighter. Um, there are a couple of places where I will hang two stitches, like the joins at the shoulders. Um, and around around the straight knitting um, once I get to the edge of this kind of straight section I will 
hang two stitches there just to kind of curve that edge a smidge more and make it more round. And if you're not sure, you'll see where you are when you get there. It is perfectly okay to put a stitch marker or something easy there so that you can see, oh, this is the stitch that I'm going to knit together with the next stitch. Um, and I'm actually going to do that myself because I have a tendency of just go, go, go and forgetting that there was something else I wanted to do. Um, so this stitch right here looks really good. Uh, I don't like that stitch marker. It's too small. Um, so I'm kind of just looking for the place where there's almost a, a square edge on 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 the short rows and that's that's where I picked up and just started going straight so I'm going to put my stitch marker on the first stitch for the straight section and that lets me know that's the first stitch I'm going to pick up and then I'll pick up that second stitch as well and I'm just kind of checking the gauge here because I know that this is tighter but I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any funny puckering happen in this that neckline's not going to flare in a way that i don't want it to and i told you from the beginning that i'm a fly by my, the seat of my pants kind of knitter so i've done necklines like this before but never quite in this method um so it's an experiment and you're coming along for the ride so i'm really close to that stitch marker i'm actually going to knit these two stitches together and then the next two stitches together as well just to kind of help bridge that gap and that'll just round out my neckline a smidge more and i'll just have to remember to do that in the next three places where this is going to happen So because we have those funny wraps on the shoulder edge, again, I want to make sure that I get those wraps in this section. So if you, it doesn't look like you have a full stitch, make sure you dig a little deeper and actually grab the stitch that is underneath that extra yarn. And this is because I short rode right off of the waist yarn. I should have, or I could have, I suppose, maybe not should have. Um, I could have, in fact, knit one row before I started my short rows, but because my short, short row started at that 31st stitch, I would have had to knit a, a full row and then break the yarn and restart it. Because I really don't like when you have mismatched rows. Okay, so I'm almost at my shoulder seam. And this is going to be another place where I want to, to knit two together. I want to make sure that there's no funny gap or holes at my shoulder seam. So... Getting ready to turn that corner there. Um, so I'm very close. It looks like I have one stitch that I can, one, one stitch before I get there. I still have about a quarter of an inch here, but I only have one stitch. So I'm going to do this stitch here, and then I'm going to grab the first stitch on the other side. And finding that one is going to be tricky because I have... I, I did that thing where I did my back neckline separate because I was rehanging in the shoulders and I didn't do that on the front so I have waist yarn across the entire breadth of it. And this one's going to be a little tight to knit. It's not going to want to pull through very well I'm sure. Oh look at that she behaved quite nicely. Alright so now we're moving across the front of this. So what I want to do realistically here is I'm going to come down and again I'm going to find that place where it bends and I'm going to mark the stitch where it bends um, so this one and that one I will want to knit together 
I'll grab my handy dandy stitch marker and snag that stitch right there. That, that just lets me know it's the first one that I want to knit together is that one. Of course, the great thing about this is if you make a mistake or your yarn breaks or you get caught up in your wheels, you can always just pull it back and keep going because you're not really following a pattern at this point. You're, you're just going. You're winging it. Or I'm winging it, I suppose. So we're at our knot right there in the middle, so we'll just grab that guy and hang it. I'm going to start from the right and work to the left and then because I'm using a long circular needle I can do the same thing over here. They're much looser once the waist yarn is out. See, these front ones slide nice and easy, whereas the, the other ones didn't really want to. So there we go. I've got one on. And yep, those stitches are itty bitty. So I'm going to pull this needle through so that the other needle is the one that's presenting. And the reason why is because my yarn to do my Kitchener stitch is over here. And I want to make sure that I have a needle tip close to that yarn. Put those back up on there. Just let them hang out a little bit. So now, what I need to do is pick up this side in the same way. Mm -hmm. 